God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. This is Office of Readings with the uh, Psalms for Monday, week three, and the uh, readings for Monday of the 31st week of Ordinary Time, found the, with the readings found on page 473, beginning with 473. just went off. Eh. Antiphon 1. Our God will be made manifest. He will not come in silence. Psalm 50. Genuine love of God. I have come not to abolish the law, but to bring it to perfection. Matthew 5, 17. And uh, this is from the Liturgy of the Hours, Catholic Book Publishing, New York, New York, 1975, the fourth volume. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting out of Zion's perfect beauty, he shines. Our God comes, he keeps silence no longer. Before him, fire devours. Around him, tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our God will be made manifest. He will not come in silence. And to fund to offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you, for I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky, all that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all that it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your vote of offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you and you shall honor me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Enter fun three. I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocausts. But God says to the wicked, how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds, you who see a thief and go with him, who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil, whose tongue is plotting crime, you who sit and malign your brother and slander your, your own mother's tongue, you do this and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? <coughs> Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, accept us as a sacrifice of praise, so that we may go through life unburdened by sin, walking in the way of salvation, and always giving thanks to you. Enter fun three. I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocaust. 
Listen, my people, and I will speak. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the Lord your God. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the first book of Maccabees, from the first chapter, from the 43rd to the 68th, 63rd verse. The Persecution of the Jews by Antiochus King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, each abandoning his particular customs. All the Gentiles conformed to the command of the king, and many Israelites were in favor of his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. The king sent messengers with letters to Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah, ordering them to follow customs far into their land, to prohibit holocausts, sacrifices, and libations in the sanctuary, to profane the Sabbaths and feast days, to desecrate the sanctuary and the sacred ministers, to build pagan altars and temples and shrines, to sacrifice swine and unclean animals, to leave their sons uncircumcised, and to let themselves be defiled with every kind of impurity and abomination, so that they might forget the law and change all their observances. Whoever refused to act according to the command of the king should be put to death. Such were the orders he published throughout his kingdom. He appointed inspectors over all the people, and he ordered the cities of Judah to offer sacrifices, each city in turn. Many of the people, those who abandoned the law, joined them and committed evil in the land. Israel was driven into hiding wherever places of refuge could be found. On the 15th day of the month of Kislev, in the year 145, the king erected the horrible abomination upon the altar of Holocaust. And in the surrounding cities of Judah, they built pagan altars. They also burnt incense at the doors of houses and in the streets. Any scrolls of the law which they found, they tore up and burnt. Whoever was found with the scroll of the covenant and whoever observed the law was condemned to death by royal decree. So they used their power against Israel, against those who were caught, each month in the city. On the 25th day of each month, they sacrificed on the altar, erected over the altar of Holocaust. Women who had their children circumcised were put to death, in keeping with the decree, with the babies hung around their necks. Their families also, and those who had circumcised them, were killed. But many in Israel were determined and resolved in their hearts, not to eat anything unclean. They preferred to die rather than be defiled with unclean food or to profane the Holy Covenant. And they did die. Terrible infliction, affliction was upon Israel. Response read Daniel 9, 18, Acts 4, 29. Open your eyes and see our plight. The nations have surrounded us in order to punish us. Reach out your arms to us and save us. Look upon their threats and help your servants to preach your word with all boldness. Reach out your arm to us and save us. From the Pastoral Constitution on the Church in the Modern World of the Second Vatican Council, from Gaudium et Spes, Joy and Hope, Numbers 82 and 83. Re-education for peace. Men must not be content simply to support the efforts of others in the work for peace. They must also scrutinize their own attitudes. Statesmen, responsible as they are for the common good of their own nation, and at the same time for the well-being of the world, the whole world, are very much dependent on the opinions and convictions of the general public. Their efforts to secure peace are of no avail 
as long as men are divided or set against each other by feelings of hostility, contempt, and distrust, by racial hatred, and by inflexible ideologies. There is then a very great and urgent need to re-educate men and to provide fresh inspiration in the field of public opinion. Those engaged in education, especially among young people, and those who influence public opinion should consider it a very serious responsibility to work for the re-education of mankind in a new attitude toward peace. We must all undergo a change of heart. We must look out on the whole world and see the tasks that we can all do together to promote the well-being of the family of man. We must not be misled by a false sense of hope. Unless antagonism and hatred are abandoned, unless binding and honest agreements are concluded, safeguarding universal peace in the future, mankind already in grave peril may well face, in spite of its marvelous advance in knowledge, that day of disaster when it knows no other peace than the awful peace of death. In saying this, however, the Church of Christ, living as it does in the midst of these anxious times, continues unwaveringly in hope. Time and again, in season and out of season, it seeks to proclaim to our age the message of the Apostle. Now is the hour of God's favor, the hour for a change of heart. Now is the day of salvation. To build peace, the causes of human discord, which feed the fires of war, must be eliminated, and among these especially, violations of justice. Many of these causes are due to gross economic inequality and delay in providing necessary remedies. Others arise from a spirit of domination and from a contempt for others. And among more fundamental causes, from human envy, distrust, pride, and other forms of selfishness. Since men cannot bear so many violations of due order, the result is that even where war does not rage, the world is constantly plagued by human conflict and acts of violence. The same evils are also found in relations between nations. It is therefore absolutely necessary that international institutions should cooperate more effectively, more resolutely, and with greater coordination of effort in order to overcome or prevent these evils and to check unbridled acts of violence. There must also be constant encouragement for the creation of organizations designed to promote peace. Responsory from Sirach 23.2, Isaiah 37.35, and Psalm 34.14. I have put in your heart an understanding of wisdom, says the Lord. I have heard your prayer, and I will defend this city, so that there will be peace in our, your time. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. I have heard your prayer, and I will defend this city, so that there will be peace in your time. God of power and mercy, only with your help can we offer you fitting service and praise. May we live the faith we profess and trust your promise of eternal life. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we're approaching Hanukkah, we're reading the book of Maccabees in the Office of Readings. And... Hanukkah comes from the book of Maccabees, the second book, I believe. Was it the first book? But anyway, the, uh, that when the, uh, of, of the feast of the dedication, the rededication of the temple after it had been profaned and uh, forced into pagan use, uh, could have called secularized, but uh, not just secularized, but put into pagan use and uh, 
false, uh, the adoration of false gods. And of course, we're seeing the revival of the adoration of false gods in our own day. But that has never gone. Uh, the, the, uh, not directly adored, not named, uh, not even considered uh, personal gods, but the worship of, of Ishtar, Ilana, of the, the for, of, of sexual license, of that, that anything, uh, anything goes sexually and all this stuff, and that uh, if, if it feels good, do it, no matter what, uh, how other people are treated or the like. So this, of course, uh, involves the, uh, the destruction of family, the destruction of marriages, because with destruction of marriages, there's, uh, harm to family and uh, uh, to society. And then that leads to uh, Moloch, the, uh, the god of destruction, uh, also a god of war. Well, Anana is also a goddess of war. Uh, that comes out that the, uh, for what they, uh, these gods all hold in common, uh, the a vice of greed overwhelming greed, that lust is a form of greed. And uh, so we said that, so uh, Moloch was honored by human sacrifice, as so was Inanna, uh, but uh, uh, demanded human sacrifice and the sacrifice of babies. And so uh, we're told from uh, A, a Greek historian, I can't remember, it's not Herodotus, it was, I can't remember, but um, that Moloch was uh, the image of the idol of Moloch, which, the image in which Moloch was residing, was a bronze uh, image of that, which had uh, a sort of furnace in the middle of it. And then through so its mouth, it had open arms, that were tilted out, and uh, the baby sacrifice, and there were diff there were definitely baby sacrifices in uh, uh, Canaanite and Carthaginian. Uh, we have archaeological evidence from the Tophet in, in uh, the Carthage, and, and like the uh, the remains of the uh, cremated babies, and. Uh, uh, and the, with uh, inscriptions about this, this was the case. And so the child would roll into the mouth of Moloch and be consumed. So we have our own forms of this, in abortion in particular, especially late, late term abortion. So uh, even with, in some forms that, you know, the, the skin of the child burnt off uh, through chemical uh, things, uh, other forms are uh, uh, dismemberment alive of the child, of the preborn child, and the likes of that, but, uh, uh, so that, and it's in the millions, this abortion uh, uh, pushes the uh, human sacrifices of the Moloch in the ancient times into obscurity, because there were so few compared to the many, many millions of children killed to abortion, preborn children killed to abortion, and other things. Uh, and other forms of human sacrifice, uh, of uh, people killed in wars, in aggressive wars, uh, that there are the, uh, the young soldiers and all that, and that civilian people killed in aggressive wars, we see this. And then there's Baal, the master, who is, uh, who is supposed to control everything. So we see this now often in the adoration of the omnicompetent state, where which the uh, the world uh, is to not just rule over the church, but rule over everything of all that. So we see the, the great uh, the horrible results of that in the totalitarian regimes. But that attitude is not just. 
some historical thing or something just uh, limited to uh, uh, fascist, openly fascist regimes or, or communist regimes, Marxist Leninist regimes, but that attitude comes in uh, totally. So we need to uh, work for our freedoms, the, main, our, uh, the freedom of speech, the freedom of conscience, the freedom of of assembly, the freedom of, of freedom of religion, free, all the uh, freedom, uh, with the basic freedom, the freedom of life, the freedom to live, uh, to be, so it comes, it, that the, the right to life is taken away, no other right exists. Well, anyway, uh, in his omnicompetent state, Antiochus Epiphanes, who apparently believed himself to be a god, that's, the, he's uh, this manifestation of the divine. That's what the epiphanes means. Uh, the word epiphany comes with a manifestation, and so um, he wanted conformity. So many people start out and say, they say when they were uh, out of power, and they say, "Oh, we just want to be tolerated," but they, uh, a lot of them just don't want that. They want to take over, and so. Uh, the control, so you, and uh, they want even thought control. So in Britain now, it's illegal. Uh, it's being challenged, of course, but uh, legally challenged uh, to pray uh, silently in your head, near, not even within sight of a of an abortuary, an abortion clinic, and uh, if you say uh, the police would came, it's it's on. On record, it's on YouTube if you want to see it. Uh, what this woman uh, was, they said the police came up to her in Britain, said, "Are you praying?" And she said, "Well, well, yes." Said, "Said, well, well you're under arrest." So uh, there's of course this uh, unity of action among the three uh, demons of, of uh, Ishtar. Moloch and Baal, uh, uh, they're uh, uh, manifested in, uh, in abortion in a, a really strong way there, but in, but in this also. So he said, everyone is to conform to, he wanted Hellenistic uh, culture to go, but he thought the Greek pagan culture was the way to, the Greek pagan way of thought was the way to go. And he was willing to be quote unquote inclusive. You could throw these things in, but although he swiftly came uh, to be intolerant of anything Jewish, so then he said, uh, he "said, but many Israelites he said the Gentiles conform to the command of the king. Uh, they should be quote unquote one people, uh, religiously. Uh, and many he said." But many Israelites were in favor of his religion. So there are those also who, you know, there are people who profess to be Christian who uh, want to go along with that, who, who uh, uh, they want to uh, adopt the, uh, tot the totalitarianism, the dictatorship of relativism that Pope Benedict of Blessed Memory uh, warned us about. And all so that, and many people. So if we just compromise with them, they'll accept that that's never true. Just ask the Catholic bishops of uh, under Henry VIII if that were the case. Uh, <coughs> so, but there were many who, and they sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And he said, so to profane the, the the feast days to desecrate the sanctuaries. So we see this often now. Uh, the sanctuaries desecrated with. Uh, uh, statements of, of radical uh, sexualist ideology or, or various things to conform to that, the pride flags and all of these other things there, um, to, uh, and so they were to abandon circumcision. So the devil hates the Jews above all. Why? Because they brought Christ. Why? They brought the commandments. And to, uh, to them, the, the commandments were brought into the world. Uh, of course, he hates us all. But it's such, and we see in our society now a great rise in anti-Semitism, 
often uh, covered over with political things, but you know, attacking of Jews for being Jews. You know that uh, uh, people being thrown out, the Jewish pe uh, 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 Jewish woman thrown out of a sorority because she was Jewish, and actually she was Egyptian Jewish. <laughs> so she wasn't an Israeli. She, uh, she, uh, all sorts of to kill the Jews, all sorts of all this stuff from the uh, the Nazi. Uh, 1930s, uh, the violence. So this, um, and there was persecution. There were many who were killed with this. Terrible affliction was upon Israel. Women who had their children circumcised were put to death, and the babies hung from their necks. Their families also, and those who had circumcised them, were killed. And so, uh, the church tells us that uh, we must work for justice. Justice for everyone. Justice from, for every person from conception throughout to natural death. Because all this is the pushing of, of uh, assisted suicide now. Uh, of all of these other things, and, and not just uh, tolerating, but actually pushing it, really, for the people, because uh, it's expensive to maintain uh, the disabled. It's expensive to maintain uh, the mentally ill. It's expensive to uh, give palliative care to the dying when you can just kill them off. Uh, rather than alleviate their pain. We'll say, oh, we'll take all your pain away by uh, by killing you. They don't say killing you usually. They use all sorts of uh, euphemisms, the way you know pro-abortion people use euphemism for abortion, uh, all that. So, uh, so, so we told... And where does this, the Second Vatican Council tells us, where does this peace start? It tells us what the New Testament tells us. It starts in the heart. It's through your, your personal reconciliation with God and uh, with, with other people and with yourself in this. Men must not be content simply to support the efforts of, of others who work for peace. They must also scrutinize their own attitude. Statesmen, responsible as they are for the common good and of their own nation, and at the same time for the well-being of the whole world, are very much dependent on the opinions and convictions of the general public. So they may ignore it, but if we we speak up and act, especially in uh, in, in democracies or alleged democracies, to speak up, to work for true peace, to when uh, peace and justice going together, and there will not be justice if we can kill uh, whole segments of the population or enslave them, uh, even if it's not under the, the term of slavery. So as it says, so much of this the uh, gross economic inequality, delay in providing necessary remedies, others rise from a spirit of domination and from a contempt for others. And among more fundamental causes, human envy, distrust, pride, and various forms of selfishness. So it's just the, the rage and the di disorder. The, so if all of this stuff, the, uh, the jingoism, the racism, the, all of these other things, the classism, the, all of the stuff that, that uh, works against uh, the peace, or works against justice. It is therefore an absolute necessity that international institutions should cooperate more effectively for the protection of human life, for the uh, maintain maintenance of our freedoms and, uh, and our duties, and uh, insisting on that we all act according to our duties, uh, and not just for our own nation, as Pope Paul VI said in, in Progressio Popolorum, uh, 
but for all of them. Yes. Prevent evils and to, uh, and to check unbridled acts of violence. We're in a very violent time right now. It seems the whole world is consumed by you know terrorism and uh, aggressive invasion and uh, uh, oppression of, of, of basic human rights. But we need to be people who are faithful, people who are not discouraged in the midst of this, for our citizenship is in heaven, as St. Paul tells us, in Christ Jesus, whose return we long for will come from heaven to save us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.